become a stress management expert. I got thinking about that. Stress management, that doesn't sound right. Stress management, anger management. Stress and anger are not something you want to manage. Let me get rid of it completely. <laughs> yep, I mean, does this make sense? Yeah, I've got this anger building inside of me. It's starting to flow into my family, my friends, my job. I need to go take anger management classes. So now I've got this anger built up inside of me, but I'm managing it very well. So if I don't have enough stuff to manage already, I've got this to manage now. <laughs> it makes no sense. So if you have to call me anything, call me a stress relief expert. And I find the best way to relieve stress is with humor. It's powerful medication. It's also a good coping mechanism for someone who's suffering from a deadly disease like cancer. Many people believe that maintaining a sense of humor on such an occasion is useful for a good quality of life. And I agree. Did you know that laughter lowers your blood pressure? Who in this room besides me has high blood pressure? And the rest of you lying? <laughs> my blood pressure is going through the roof along with my cholesterol. It's one of the things about growing old. Everything goes down and goes up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Everything wants to go up goes down. Everything wants to keep leaves you. Thank goodness for Libertor the Ivory Road game. My grandfather's 97 years old. He tried Viagra and it worked. Unfortunately, he's seen out and remember to do it. <laughs> I tried real game for the heck of it. I didn't even try to rhythm a scalp real good went to bed that night. Woke up the next morning, the hairiest fingers you could have seen. <laughs> something backfired on me. <laughs> Laughter releases endorphins in body's natural painkillers, which are ten times more powerful than morphine. And morphine's the strongest man made pain relief there is. Laughter's ten times more powerful. And the number one advantage to laughter, it relieves stress. Stress is the number one cause of death in America today. It's the one illness that we all have in common. 95% of all illnesses are stress-related. There's not a lot of laughter in medicine, but there is a lot of medicine and laughter, and I can prove it. In 1964, Norman Cousins, who was then the editor of the Saturday Review, went into the hospital with life-threatening spinal disease. Doctors gave Cousins a 1 in 500 chance of survival. 1 in 500, not very good odds. In fact, they'd given up on Cousins. They told his family, it doesn't look good. We don't think he's going to get out of here alive. It's not the thing you want to hear from your doctor. Fortunately, Cousins did not give up on himself. He decided to infuse himself with laughter treatments. For 15 minutes each day, he watched clips of Lord and Hardy movies, Abbott and Costello, the Marx Brothers, and he found that 15 minutes of laughter a day provided him with two hours of pain-free sleep at night. Blood tests also showed that his inflammation levels were greatly lowered after the self-induced human treatments. Eventually, Cousins was able to completely reverse his illness, walk out of the hospital feeling great. And he documented the entire thing in a book title, The Night of the Illness. And today, electricity effects have grown so much that the field has its own name. A big name, too. Check it out. Psychoneurimmunology. Let's all say it. <laughs> Let's break it down. Psychoneuroimmunology. It's the study of how psychological factors, the brain and the immune system, interact to influence health. I read a survey recently that claims children laugh as much as 400 times a day. 400 times a day. Children laugh at the fact just that it feels good to laugh. Haven't you seen a little baby wake up, start giggling right away? They do it because it feels good. And that tells me that we're all born with a sense of humor. Others speak to say you, you acquire it. You're not born with it, you acquire it. I say you're born with it. It's like the other senses. Your sense of humor is with you from the day you're born. It's just that some of us get out of use it. Some of us never use it. Some of us along the way forget that it's there. Because adults laugh only 15 times a day. Now why is that? What is it that happens between being a child and an adult that makes us lose our sense of humor? Any questions, anybody? Anybody have any idea? Because I asked that question last week at a conference in Orlando that I did. Ladies sit down front, shut it up, we got married. <laughs> I know you're not here with your wife tonight. <laughs> if 
getting married makes you lose your sense of humor, you obviously married the wrong person. I'm not trying to end any marriage. It's just not my reason for being here tonight. But you don't need to be around people that are going to bring you down and make you feel bad. You need to be around people that are going to pick you up and make you feel good. The problem is trying to find those people. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but the world is full of negative people. You probably still are thinking, I know every one of them. <laughs> We're negative by default. 45% of all conversation is negative. Reminds me of the preacher walking down the road store and I jump off a bridge and commit suicide. I asked him why I was going to do it. The guy started telling him. Two hours later, they both jumped. <laughs> One of the reasons we last a little as adults is because the older we get, the more responsibility we take on. And with responsibility comes more stress. There's nothing funny about stress. We are programmed to see the stress in life, not to see the humor. That's the bad news, good news and more bad news. The bad news is there's stress all around you. You cannot avoid it. You don't have to accept it, but you can't avoid it. And most of it is brought on by a place just north of here called Washington, D.C. We need to be more careful with who we vote for and how we vote because they are creating a lot of stress in our lives and we don't need it. The good news is there's humor all around you too. The more bad news, we don't see the humor. We only see the stress. We are programmed that way. You need to reprogram your way of thinking and see the humor in life. But when you do reprogram it,